here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we continue to look back at last year's deadly white supremacist rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, at the rally, a neo-Nazi named James Alex Fields drove his Dodge Charger into a crowd of counter-demonstrators, killing 32-year-old anti-racist activist Heather Heyer. Nineteen other people were injured. Fields has since been charged with first-degree murder, as well as federal hate crimes. We're now joined by Heather's mother, Susan Bro. She joins us from Charlottesville and joins A.C. Thompson, as well, who did the documentary premiering tonight on PBS Frontline. Susan, it's a year later, um, but it's my first time to offer you my condolences, the whole family at Democracy Now!'s condolences on the death of your daughter, Heather. Thank you so much. So, it has been a year um, since August 12th, um, when you lost your daughter. Talk about why Heather was out there on August 12th last year, one of those who were protesting the white supremacist rally. Heather always believed and acted on her beliefs that equality was for all people, that if anybody is marginalized in the human race, then we all are. So when her friends, who were African-American, were going to be at the rally, um, they said, come with us. And at first she was like, nah, I think I'll stay away. And then she saw where her friend Courtney had live streamed the events of Friday night. And she said, I have to go. And her friend tried to talk her out of it. And she said, I know it's dangerous. I could die, but I have to be there. And of course, when we say things like that, we don't really think we're going to die. But she was there to support her friends. And the group that she was with deliberately stayed away from the fighting all day. Uh, wherever they saw fights, they turned away. And she was with a very large group of counter protesters. Um, she personally didn't even carry any signs. She just had her cigarettes, her lighter her keys and her phone with her. She had parked her car nearby. And um, she was dressed to go to work as a waitress later. She had her hair back in a long braid, and she had uh, on her uh, black shirt and black top that she would wear to waitress. And um, she thought it was going to be just a day of walking the streets, um, you know, shouting Black Lives Matter and whose streets, our streets. And um, they had done that all day long. Uh, from what I understand from Marcus and Marissa, her friends, they thought the Nazis were all leaving. Everybody was kind of relaxed and happy as they were coming back onto the barricaded mall, and uh, they were going to get some food and some water. It was a really hot day, and that's when Mr. Fields chose to drive his car into the crowd. And he hit your daughter. Yes, he did. And injured he hit a lot her of friends. other people. Yes. I just recently saw pictures of the wedding you were at of her dear friends, um, made famous because uh, her friend, his feet up in the air as he was just upended by this car. Now his leg was shattered. As he was pushing uh, his partner away from the car, trying to save her life. Right. He told me he reached for Heather, he couldn't get to her, but he at least knocked Marissa out of the way. And I said, honey, it's okay. And he still cries about that to this day. He's so frustrated and angry about that. Um, it is what it is, and we move forward. You know, I, I can't be consumed by grief to where I can't function. I have to move forward. So my life now revolves around not only have I picked up Heather's baton and I'm running with it, but I'm also passing it off to as many people as I possibly can. They tried to silence my daughter, one voice. You don't get to do that. I said at her funeral, you just magnified her, because not only am I going to speak up and speak louder, but I'm going to make sure lots of other people speak up, too. Susan, did you think of Heather as an activist? Um, she was a quiet activist. She was very passionate about her beliefs, but she was only passionate um, in small groups, in one-on-one -on -one conversations, and in small family groups or on Facebook. That was her method of, of 
uh, changing people's hearts and minds. And what she would do was what she was actually taped doing that day. She walked up to one of the girls as the um, neo-Nazis were leaving, a girl in a black helmet, and she said, talk to me about why you're here. Why do you feel this way? What, what made you want to come? Why do you hate people? Can you talk to me about it? Can you explain to me? And, you know, tried to be gently pulling the girl out of um, her belief system to talk to her. All the girl would say to her was no comment, no comment, uh, because that's what they're trained to do. But that was Heather's method of converting people, was talking one-on-one. -on -one. Heather's last message on Facebook, if you're not outraged, you're not paying attention. Um, Heather also worked to help people going into bankruptcy. Is that right, Susan? Yes. Um, one press article mistakenly put that she did that to help the poor, and somebody told me they got that from the website. We'll get that changed. Not only poor people file for bankruptcy. Donald Trump has filed for bankruptcy many times. I don't think he actually came to Heather for help, but um, a lot of people file for bankruptcy. But she was the in bankruptcy intake person. She handled every single file that came through the office. And after she died, thousands of people over the course of the last year um, have come to me and said, well, I knew Heather. And I say, how did you know her? And sometimes they'll say they knew her as a bartender or a waitress, but sometimes, more often than not, they'll say they met her at Miller Law Group and that she was um, a person who made them feel comfortable, at ease. Uh, many times she would help people figure out how they didn't have to even file for bankruptcy, so they never actually became a client because Heather could help them figure out what they needed to do to save their car, save their house, and get themselves back on track. Um, so I was very proud of that as a mother, but I never knew any of that until after she was gone. I wanted to turn to uh, an interview that A.C. Thompson did with Democrat Mike Signer, the former mayor of Charlottesville, for the documentary, uh, Documenting Hate Charlottesville. Groups that previously had been stuck in the shadows and at the margins and at the extremes were brought into the mainstream, and that's why they felt welcome to try and unite the right in Charlottesville. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a city of, you know, just under 50,000 people, and we were, we were in this, we were this target for forces much, much bigger than us. I saw you that night over at the, the county government headquarters, uh, and you looked stricken. S stricken is not a bad word for it. I wish that we had known more. I wish that um, we had been given more information by the, by the state intelligence apparatus. Did they say anything like, hey, these guys are going to come with clubs, they're going to come with pepper spray, they're going to come with, you know, implements of violence? No. We had one briefing with three members of the Virginia State Police who came and talked to us on city council. They did not present us with any evidence of a credible threat. As I understand it, about 10 people altogether have been prosecuted from those days. Does that sound accurate to you? It sounds like it should be a lot higher. So that's Mike Signer, the former mayor of Charlottesville. Since then, uh, Nakia Walker um, has been elected, the first African-American woman mayor of Charlottesville. Um, the Unite the Right rally certainly might have helped her in her bid as she challenged the establishment. Uh, her theme was unmasking the illusion. But I wanted to bring this into the conversation with you, Susan, and AC. Um, AC, starting with you, do you think the response of Donald Trump before and after how the Trump administration is dealing with white supremacy um, left the Charlottesville establishment flat-footed before? What, what do you mean? Meaning mm. that they weren't prepared and that they didn't feel they were properly briefed, that they didn't understand who these people were? So, it's a really interesting thing, because our understanding is this is that the federal intelligence agencies and the federal law enforcement agencies compiled research on these groups and that they had intelligence on these groups. And now our sort of question is, why did that not reach the local authorities? Why did that not reach mm -hmm. the, uh, the city council? And what happened between the federal government compiling research, 
the state police fusion center and the state police compiling research and intelligence and the local police compiling intelligence that leads to somehow folks thinking that nothing bad is going to happen that day. Susan Bro, who do you hold responsible? in addition to James Alex Field, as who has been charged with first-degree murder for the death of Heather? Oh, well, it's a very complex issue. Um, a lot of mistrust in all the wrong places. My understanding is that local efforts and of investigation were focused on the local activists, the local anti-racist activist, and not on um, outside forces coming in, or even the inside forces who were already here in place. Jason Kessler is one of Charlottesville's own. He also graduated from UVA, so um, one of the organizers of the rally, and Richard Spencer, right. And my understanding is that Southern Poverty Law Center had had issued warnings but they were not being heeded. I, I think that many people thought, as I did, that basically the alt-not-right and the not-so-new Nazis are uh, basically buffoons and idiots and didn't really take them seriously. Um, from what I have seen and observed uh, since then, is that they generally will try to present themselves as so outrageous that nobody will take them seriously. They will come with a serious intent, but they generally will attack if they're going to um, most likely try a lethal attack as people are relaxing when people are letting down their guard saying, oh, they're leaving, oh, they're going now. I know in Florida, uh, they actually had members uh, um, get into an altercation where they were firing a gun at people at a bus stop as uh, rally participants from both sides were leaving. It seems to be a pattern. This is what they did in Charlottesville as well. Is it a question, A.C., of poor policing or perhaps protecting white supremacists? For example, what happened last weekend in Berkeley, California, the police arrested the anti-fascist protesters, not the white supremacists, posted their names, their um, uh, photos online, they haven't even been convicted? No, I don't. I don't think it was. I don't think it was that sort of thing where where the police were protecting one side or the other. I think the police essentially in Charlotte in Charlottesville. I think the police in Charlottesville essentially abdicated their responsibility almost entirely. On you both. are going up to them saying, what are you doing? Right, right. Because, look, we have had 50 years of, uh, I would say, violent resistance against the Klan, against Nazis, against all these white supremacist groups. They come to the streets and they will meet heavy resistance. You know that. And so if you're law enforcement, you know the thing that I need to do is keep these two groups separated and make sure that people don't bring clubs, weapons other sort of things that they're, they're going to attack each other with. It's not, it's not that hard. We just have 30 seconds. Susan Bro, what do you want us to remember about Heather as we move into this next weekend, the anniversary of her death, another um, Unite the Right rally, this time in Washington, D.C.? Uh, what I want you to remember is that everyone needs to stand up against hate. Everyone needs to pick up that baton. If you need information on how to do that, contact me at the uh, Heather Heyer Foundation, and I will help you find ways to do that. Susan Bro, mother of Heather Heyer, she now runs the Heather Heyer Foundation, and A.C. Thompson, correspondent for Frontline PBS, reporter for ProPublica. His investigation documenting hate Charlottesville, the documentary, premieres tonight on PBS stations around the country. And that does it for our broadcast. Democracy Now! has a job opening for a broadcast engineer. Check the website, democracynow.org. Democracy Now! produced by Mike Burke, Rick Fels, Claire Mary Shea, Carla Wilson, and Goddess Gator.